Hi, I'm Dan Newtone from Hospital Records. Uh, I'm here in my studio with Future Music. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about how I go about recreating samples, uh, changing them around, making them into your own um, for all kinds of interesting reasons. Um, and then I'm also going to show you uh, a remix that I've done for Marlon Rudette, a track called New Age, that should be out about now. Um, show you how I made it, what went into it, and uh, the different elements that, that came to building it. So I'm going to start off um, by showing you how I would recreate a sample. It's a um, useful way to get around certain copyright legal issues. Uh, if you sample something, uh, you have to pay for it. But there are ways around it. If you recreate it, change enough of the notes, um, make it different enough, then you can avoid uh, an unfortunate lawsuit and um, hopefully end up with something that's unique to you and, and no one else has got. So I'm going to start off with a, a sample that I've taken from, um, it's from an old library record um, from a company called Bruton. Uh, and this is the sample to start with. <laughs> So I'm just going to do the first little bit, this um, this little section at the, at the start. So, um, first thing is to, to get the tempo roughly right. So just zoom in, find the start. That's close enough. And then have a look at the tempo. So take that down to, let's try 90. So you can see the loop starts here, so I'm a little bit slow. 92. 93, 95, 96, that looks about right. Just check that with the metronome. That's close enough for us. Um, first thing I'm going to do is try and recreate that synth lead. So I'm going to use Mini Moog. So this is just the, the first patch that comes up. Okay, and at the end of the, the phrase you can hear... a bit of LFO on the on the oscillators. So I'm just going to set that up. So mod wheel to LFO AM, LFO to all the oscillators. There we go. Okay, so now we can try playing that in. It won't sound exactly the same, but it's close enough for now and we can uh, tweak it later on. Okay. 
So I'll just do a bit of quantizing on that, just to tighten it up. Let's see how that sounds by itself. I'm just gonna move this, um, whoops, move this pitch mod back. We can get rid of all of this rubbish in the middle. Whoops. Needs a bit of reverb on that, so just get the channel up. I'm just going to use just a simple Rimworks. Okay, next thing is the the synth you can hear sitting behind. A um, bit more fizzy. Um, so use the Jupiter Jupiter 8V for this. Let's see how that, go, how that sounds. Get rid of the delay. There we go. Okay, let's try recording that in. Okay, so next thing is to make that nice and legato. Oh, that's not legato. Quantize it first. There we go. Starting to sound close. Um, so there's a bass guitar in there uh, following at the bottom. So I'm just going to use contact for this. Um, Scarby bass. those as well. Okay, next thing is the little 
picked guitar part. So just going to load up contact. And go to the factory library and the rhythm rock guitar. Whoops. Okay. Get rid of all the distortion. enough um, so what we can do now is give that a bit of phase um, stick on um, guitar rig for this uh, just to do some transient work on it we need to need it to cut through but we don't really want all the uh, the sustain on it so I'm gonna use that to boost the uh, the initial transient and get rid of the, the sustain so take the attack up sustain down So without it, with it, okay, then we've got the other elements to listen out for. There's a bit more kind of thickness in the mid range on, on the sample. I'm gonna just gonna, I don't think there's one in there, but I'm gonna stick a Rhodes in um, just because that does a good job of thickening things out when we want it. Um, so, Scarby Vintage Keys, my roads of choice. Um, just let that load up. Okay. So same chords that we put on the uh, Jupiter synth. Let's give it a bit of 
shape. So we can just drag the chords up. A bit more velocity. Okay. Okay, that helps. I'm going to leave out that big kick drum because that's only going to cause us problems when we start layering that on our track. Um, but I will stick in the hi-hats. Uh, they sound nice when they're filtered sometimes. Um, so, more contact. Uh, and let's go for Abbey Road 60s drums. So load that up. Okay, I'm not going to let that play because it's horribly out of time. But we can quantize that. I'm missing the first hit. Okay, and just accentuate these differences a little bit. Okay, that's a bit extreme, so I'm just going to compress those velocities. lively that so let's just um I think we've got most of the elements. Um, so now it's just a matter of trying to get this to sound right. So we're going to do make a got a group up here, group one, and I'm just going to send all of these. Where are they? All of these over here to group one, and hopefully. Oops. This is going to allow me to hopefully EQ these um, all these parts to, to make them sound a little bit more like the original. So. down the reverb a bit on that lead synth.
the lead's a little bit prouder in that version. Get this a little bit meatier, a bit less in, in terms of the top end. tinkering now really just little details whoops synth um, it just needs another let's get a subtractor up over in reason um, and let's because I've got the MIDI part here in in Cubase let's route that out to reason close it's not perfect but it's um it's a good approximation so what we can now do is forget about that sample and start writing something that's a little bit different so if I just take the take the Jupiter part to start with and try writing something similar but but different so just try some um, different chords so if we just it sometimes helps rather than starting on the same chord to start somewhere different So get a click up. That wasn't what I played. That's right. So um, 
Let's uh, do this like this. So we can just put the bass line in. across the rhythm of the, the guitar part. Let's take it up to our root note. Okay, then we've got the 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 lead something that's it's a bit different. Um. There we go. And then that's quite away from the uh, original. But it still has a fair amount of the feel. There you go. So next up, another sample. It's from the same kind of source. It's from a, another library record. Um, this is the loop. So, first thing is to get the tempo sort of right. Um, so this one's slow. Four bar loop, so that's a little bit too slow. Let's try 75. 77 looks pretty good. Okay, great. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is get the get the drums. Trusty contact. Quite dull in terms of the the actual kick and the snare. But let's
old scuff there. Okay. Next thing is the bass line. So contact. Um, Scarby pre bass fat. better in here. The way that, if I play this, it sounds a bit lifeless and flat, but with the, the Scarby bass, if I hold down this note and then press that, then it plays hammer on, which you can see it says on the screen, hammer on there. And if I add a, if I, so if I go, just a fraction before. You get a much more, much more convincing bass part. So let's record that in. shorten these down they don't need to be that long uh, and then when I quantize just deselect the the little early grace notes and then hit quantize everything else should be snapped in make sure that these overlap so that we get that hammer-on effect I was talking about let's have a listen as well so they don't overlap. It's 
last one just sounds better for one reason or another. So let's do that. down just at the end. Okay. Okay, so next thing is the clavinet. So Scarby Vintage Keys, clavinet upper. So time, um, just get rid of any extra little notes in there. And then I want to just compress the velocities. are just a little bit early which is because of the grace notes but they just jump out a little bit so I'm just gonna nudge those across so they don't jump out quite so much okay transient designer again take some of the um, some of the sustain sound off the clav so it's just a little bit more plucky so transient master attack up sustain down bell synth. I'm just going to use subtractor for this. Um, so let's stick that over here. Uh, that's where we are. Okay. some of the bottom end off that.
can just duplicate that. Whoops. That's the bass guitar having some interesting thoughts. guitar. Okay, so I think we need some reverb on this high synth. to sound close. Um... We need to lose the top end off. We can pan these as well. Um like on the original. Okay, so we need a bit more, a bit more decay on the, whoops, we don't want that. Be nice to get a bit more fizz off these drums. Um, so Bit of rebub on this as well. create a group, route everything through to that, and then we can EQ all of that as one. Route them all to group two.
So we're pretty close. So now what I'm going to do is just try and get it so that it sounds nice to, to my ears rather than going exactly for copying the sample. Now we can try making an alternative loop. So just drag the drums across. No, it's on the drums. Drag the drums across. So. Turn off the transient designer for now. Okay. Okay, tighten it up because that was awful. Um, fix lengths. Okay, let's get some of these volumes under control. I need to compress those because some of those notes are hitting hard with their transients messed around with. Um, Okay, that'll do. So just record that in. Okay, I'm just gonna need to tweak a couple of those. So we'll just quantize it first. Too far. Take that down.
move up in the, uh, in the kit. So uh, this is a, uh, I've done a remix for a guy called Marlon Rudette, um, who is Nene Cherry's son. And uh, it's, uh, well, I can play the tune so you can have a listen, get the idea of what I started with. Let's start from the beginning. Love was a word I don't understand. The simplest sound, four letters. Whatever it was, I'm over it now. With every day, it gets better. It gets better. Are you loving the pain? Loving the pain. And with every day. So you get the idea. Um, the first thing that attracted me to this, uh, to the tune, or the first thing that grabbed me at least, was the was the vocal. If love was a word, I don't understand. The simplest sound, four letters. It's quite a delicate delivery, um, and it seemed to me if I was going to do a drum and bass remix of this, uh, it's going to be a matter of having an intro and a breakdown. It's quite kind of sparse. Epic is not uh, a word that I particularly like to use, um, but that kind of thing, um, and then drop in something completely different. So uh, I got the vocal into into Cubase, and just put a bit of delay, um, a doubler, ping pong delay, and a bit of reverb. If love was a word, I don't understand. Simple sounds, and it all kind of instantly sounds more interesting if you listen to it dry. If love was a word, no, sorry, try again. If we listen to it dry, if love was a word, I don't understand. The simple sound, four letters. Whatever it was, whatever it was, I'm over it now. Has, has a bit more identity. Um, so what I did was I worked out some chords that sat underneath it. So essentially it sits on, on G minor, which is, uh, if I get something up that I can play to you on. Um, um, so I've just got a chord of G minor and I put together this little riff here. The nice thing about that is put lots of different notes underneath it. So it allows me to have a, a bass line that progresses, modulates, but the music on top can all sit in the same place. Um, then a little uh, arpeggio sequence. If love was a word.
And I've just run that through, um, through it's the scream uh, in Reason. So we've got the, um, we've got the digital, uh, essentially it's like a, a bit crusher. So without the effect, Love. That just kind of Love. destroys it a little bit. So from the intro, you have all the elements there, but kind of broken down. And then as soon as it drops, there's a, the bass line comes in, a very simple kind of signy, subby bass line that underpins things and gives you an idea of the progression that's kind of, that's going to come. The arpeggio starts to open up. And then carries on up another octave. This one's a, uh, there's a white noise above. And then this one's a, a cymbal. I've just automated the volume on that. One of the nice things about um, handling automation in Cubase now is if you grab things, you can go to the corner and draw in fades like this and it it's a bit kind of clever about how it deals with them. So when you when you get down to low volumes, it actually deals with them as kind of logarithmic values rather than just linear things, which um, means that fades like this, aside from looking pretty, um, actually sound kind of natural as well. Essentially, the, the drums on this are, are, are pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a, a re-drum, which is the uh, the drum machine over in Reason, um, and that is just handling a, just a simple. Uh, where are we? My soloed in here. There we go. Just a, a kick there, one snare, one with a bit more kind of noise and decay on it. A couple of hats and a tambourine. So there's like a slow hat in here. Faster one that's kind of not so sparkly, pitched down a bit. Um, um, and so that's that's basically the, the kind of the majority of the beat. But then I've also got in some reverses down here.
and they're they're nice and loose like the timing on on this one doesn't really sit particularly anywhere um, but it just gives a nice little extra shuffle to the beat um, and then there's a handful of brakes shakers and things so On its own, it sounds pretty horrible, but. If I take it out, you already notice the gap. This gives an extra little bit of energy to the, to the beat. Uh, and then a break called Cold Sweat. And this one's called Sandy. It's a it's a classical break. And I program that so there's no kicks in there, no shuffles, just the um just the shaker and the snare, which gives an extra little bite to the snare too. So the bass uh, comes out of Reason, I believe. And this is a combinator um, that I made. Uh, so it's a combination of a subtractor, EQ, scream, and a filter. Um, there's an LFO on the phase, and it's a, it's a uh, saw LFO. And essentially the, the patch. It's kind of like a, like a, a re-space basically, that's the, the original combinator that I made. But with the filter taken down, and the uh, LFO set to a saw, and then you end up with something that's got uh, quite a different character. This is another subtractor part that sits on top. It's basically just a, a kind of, yeah, it's, it's the opposite of the, uh, the the combinator part that it's following. It's got a lot more top into it. Goes through some uh, some bit crushing. Then an EQ to get rid of that unpleasant frequency. Then a little low pass to get rid of that. So without it, you kind of struggle, especially on smaller speakers, to pick up the, the pitch of the bass note. So that helps um, just to, to pick things out. And then there are little parts that come in later on, like uh, this one here. So these are things that, they're kind of counter melodies that work against the bass line. So you've got... So where the bass line goes up, they go down, and then there's another one that comes in in a bit that is like a counter melody to that one.
and then into the breakdown and it's essentially it's the the vocal again so the, the only real elements of the original tune that, that stayed are the verses which you have in, in the breakdown and then there are elements like the uh this little line here and this one here New Age is the name of the tune. You tend to find that um, labels like it when you put the uh, the line of the chorus that's the title of the tune somewhere into the remix. So I kind of snuck that in there. Um, but essentially, it's, uh, what I've done is I've taken the vocal, used that to give me an idea of some chord progressions, some melodies, uh, and built the track around that. It's not really the kind of tune where I would have run the whole vocal the entire you know six minutes um, verses and chorus all intact um, so it's more a chance more a, a case of choosing the bits that you like and um, and finding ways to, to wipe them into uh, a tune that kind of that feels like feels like you so there we go